Hello, I'm Keith Howes and I was Features Editor of London's Gay News from 1976 to 1979. One of the most impressive plays I saw just before I joined Gay News was a play by a group called Gay Sweatshop. It was called Mr X and Mr X was a gay man who has denied his sexuality and lives in a shadow world. It was played in gay centres and universities really across Britain in 1975 and into 1976. Gay Sweatshop was run almost entirely by gay and lesbian people. And one of its playwrights later on was a man called Martin Sherman. And Martin Sherman it was who wrote one of the most controversial plays of the 1970s. It was called Bent. Why was it controversial? Well, it dealt with gays in Dachau in Dachau prison camp, concentration camp. But why was it controversial? There'd be many, many plays and many films that have dealt with concentration life. Well, of course, it was controversial because it was about gay prisoners in concentration camps, those who wore the pink triangle. And many of the theatre critics of the time in Britain were Jewish, and some of them did not like the play at all. In fact, they accused it of sensationalism. In fact, they accused it of taking away audiences' sympathy for the Jews by putting gays in the forefront of oppression, for once, I may add. So, Gay Sweatshop had nurtured the talent of Martin Sherman, a New York Jew who had really survived in Britain on the smell of an oily rag. In fact, he was put up by two members of Gay Sweatshop on their floor for quite a few months. He was totally penniless. His plays, like Bent, didn't get any uh, production. They were very difficult to produce until the Royal Court took it upon themselves to produce it in 1979. And the star was Ian McKellen, together with Tom Bell. And I saw it on its opening night at the Royal Court Theatre, and I'll never forget the electricity in the air, and the mainly gay audience, of course, and when it ended, the place erupted, and people were hugging each other and crying, and feeling that for the first time, this situation that gay people had found themselves in, in Nazi Germany and other countries overrun by the Nazi, had at last been recognised as a work of documentation, but also a work of art, because there is a scene in the play where Tom Bell and Ian McKellen make love, but they're not allowed to touch. So they make love through words until they both have an orgasm. Such things had never been seen on the stage in Britain, certainly, and I'd never seen them. So this was a direct offshoot for me of Gay Sweatshop and the importance of having ghetto theatre which had been, you know, something of a controversy. Should gays be in a ghetto? Should there be a gay newspaper? Should there be gay theatre? Should there be gay films? Should there be gay people? Surely we were all just the same, and by marginalising and ghettoizing, we were in further creating discrimination. Um, Bent was not a huge success. It, it transferred to the Criterion. It ran for a while. Of course, Ian McKellen's name held it up there. And of course, uh, it did get some degree of critical acclaim. And there was controversy at Gay News because our theatre critic, Peter Bennett, did not like the play at all. Peter was Jewish, I may say, but that shouldn't really have interfered with his, his judgment. He was a very good theatre critic. And um, we had to have it re-reviewed by another theatre critic when it transferred to the Criterion, because unfortunately the Gay News Review wasn't the kind of thing it was going to sell, because we wanted to have a positive review outside the theatre, and we couldn't use, they couldn't use the Gay News Review. So a lot of gay people agreed with some of the straight critics, feeling that this was sensationalism, that gay people were hijacking the Holocaust for their own ends. Whereas many people saw it as finally those groups, which included Jehovah's Witnesses, Gypsies, Communists, and of course gays, were finally getting their story across. Of course, this was a fictional story because so few 
of those people survived, although later on we saw a documentary where some of the survivors were interviewed. But the real horror, apart from the horror of the concentration camp, was that because homosexuality was illegal in Germany, many of those men after the liberation of the camps were put back in prison. They were still criminals in the eyes of German justice. So here was Ian McKellen making a very powerful statement, playing a gay man who was a playboy, a drug addict, someone that didn't care about relationships, finally finding true value in life behind the barbed wire of a concentration camp. And Tom Bell playing a communist who was politically activist. He was a communist gay man and he was able finally to liberate the gay man that didn't care about gay politics. So it was making a contemporary statement as well as making a statement about Nazism and indeed every single kind of fascist um, situation of which there were so many because at Gay News, although I wasn't the news editor of course, the news reports were coming in from Nigeria, South Africa, uh, China, Chile, so many countries where gays were treated so appallingly and of course that year uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini had come back to Iran and already uh, gay people had been executed in Iran. So this play was, was monumental in its impact on, on so many of us, so many gay people. But we shouldn't forget the work of Gay Sweatshop because they did put on some terrific plays. They put on uh, Indiscreet, they put on As Time Goes By, and there was also the Dear Love of Comrades, which was about Edward Carpenter, arguably the first gay liberationist at the beginning of the century who lived in this beautiful community with his lover, and he believed that gay liberation went hand in hand with political liberation.